Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you all had um, a good Christmas and New Year. And yeah, as you can see, I'm finally back at the, the layout. Only gonna be for a short period though, which is a bit unfortunate, but I thought seeing as I'm here, I would just give you a little bit of a, another sort of update tour, um, show you some of the new locos that I've got, and yeah, just give you a little bit more of a general tour, because it's, it's been quite a while since I've been at the layout and since I've done a video on it. So I guess if we start up at the back, as you can see up there, I've got the the new real track, uh, class 156. That's in the Scottish Saltire livery. If I get a little bit closer here. Um, very good, very impressed with that. Um, I've had some issues um, with some of these DCC locos, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, the Sterling single down there and the real track are they're both DCC sound fitted and at the moment I'm running off a DCC select which I think if I'm right in saying you sort of get a, a, a sort of software version at the time of purchase and then it sort of is just fixed at that um, and updates come up for some of the the software that you can use like on your computer and everything and, and it gets out of date and I think that's the case with mine because some of these new locos with the DCC um, decoders in them I've been having some some issues with them uh, more so the Sterling single than the 156 to be honest that's not as bad but the main issue is not stopping I don't know if anyone else has has experienced that um, but certainly with the Sterling single and occasionally with the, the 156, once I get them running and the sound on, they then won't come to a stop when I try and try and stop them. So that's why there's not been too much on them as of yet. Um, it's nothing wrong on their part. Um, it's, it's purely the controller I think is out of date. So I'm either gonna send that away to Hornby and get a software update or um, look at getting something different um, to run the DCC locos. So yeah, we've got that in the background, two car, um, DMU, DCC sound, uh, all internal lights. There's loads of little features on there like um, door opening lights on the side, the little headboard. Um, I'm probably not gonna be able to, to show it too well to be honest. On the front, those all light up. Um, the sound range on them is really good. So yeah, I definitely can't complain when it comes to that. I just hope I can sort out this issue and um, sort of yeah resolve that and, and get a bit more use out of them really. Um, moving forward this is the Hornby um, Mallard which came out it's you know quite a few months ago now but um, I still haven't done a proper video alongside that or behind that I should say it's pulling the Rails of Sheffield dynamometer car this is um, in the version of when it set the speed record um, and I've just got some of the, the railroad Hornby coaches behind that to sort of emulate what it would have looked like when it did the speed record. Um, I have got the speed record version as well, um, but I don't think that's actually been out of the box. I've just been so busy recently. So yeah, definitely impressed by this. I've always wanted to get a Mallard. Um, I'm surprised it's taken this long to get one, to be honest. And with the addition of the, the dynamometer car, it's, it's just a perfect sort of coupling between them. So certainly can't complain there that's that's only dcc ready at the moment i haven't fitted any decoders to that it's um it's just a, a huge task that i've got to try and some of the engines um i get dcc ready some of them if they're more more special edition like the sterling single the real track which just to be a bit more of a hassle to try and fit with sound afterwards i tend to get um, with sound off the bat but you know something like the a4s you can get all the the hornby tts decoders you know pretty cheaply if, if you're on a budget so i've just left that for the moment um moving down here we've still got the free class 68 um there is probably going to be a few more of those incoming not any more scott rail obviously but um there should be one i think i'll probably get the drs in the it's the, the blue it's pretty similar to the scott rail blue to be honest the the dark blue um, that Dapple are releasing. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head when those are due, but don't be surprised if you see one of them uh, and potentially one of the Trans Pennine ones as well. I just, it's not really the area I'm modeling with the Trans Pennine stuff, but 
I just sort of think they look pretty cool. So we'll see if that happens. In, well, in light of all the Hornby releases recently, might not be able to, to afford it or justify it. But these P classes are still out, the Hatton's P classes, still very impressed with them. Um, I think I might be boxing these up and taking them up to uni with me. Um, so you might see some of the little little shots from up there that I'm planning to, to try and do like a little diorama and have a little photo, sort of just a little scene that I can, I don't have a lot of space up there, but something I can at least take photos on and do little reviews on, um, probably not even really running them to be honest, but yeah, all three of these are still here, they're not going anywhere. Uh, class 66, this is the Evening Star version. Um, I haven't really run this as much as I'd like to, to be honest. I had a bit of gauging issues on the the platform, um, especially where the mallard is, that second one, and I think maybe at the back with those Metcalf walls. So, um, yeah, not much has really happened with that, to be honest. It's, it's sort of just been sitting out, but I quite like it, to be honest. Um, so it's still been sitting there, hasn't really been run. Um, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure what I'll be doing with that. I probably will keep it, to be honest. It's quite a nice, nice loco to have. And then finally, the Sterling single. Obviously, if any of you follow me on social media, you know that I love this thing. I had a, a sort of, I don't know, just a special, special sort of, I guess, idea, um, connection with it, really. Um, one of my first times up at the National Railway Museum, I remember being able to go up onto the footplate and I spent about half an hour up there just talking to one of the the volunteers at the the museum you know te te sort of talking me through all, all what everything did and there was just something about it and the shape of it it's such an iconic shape that I just sort of have a real big soft spot for so incredibly glad I was able to get one of these I know that some people I think have had issues or delays getting theirs so I'm pretty glad that I got mine all okay and with the sound in it as well it's it does sound amazing when it has worked with the select um but yeah this is causing me a huge amount of problems at the moment so especially on well on this layout anyway i haven't started anything else as of yet but at the moment it's it's sort of sitting there waiting to be run <laughs> it has run around a bit but yeah just with the issues i don't want to it, it just doesn't stop i essentially have to time it and when it comes round in front of me, I have to basically pick it up off the track. That's the only way it will stop. Um, even if I press the emergency stop on the, the controller, it won't stop. So not the best um, thing you want really happening with your locos, especially ones that are as expensive and mean as much as this one does to me. So yeah, you will see more of that. Um, I think um, I might take that one up to university with me as well and try and get some cool photos of. Over here, we've still got the little the goods yard here, um, and we've got the the Mark II Scotrail coach, obviously to to go with the 68s, which um, well they're going to be joined by a few more coaches now, as everyone will probably have have been well aware of the um, that Hornby released, um, I guess from factory Scotrail Saltire Mark IIs to go with this set that the 68 pull and um, the five circular so there will definitely be a full set of them um, once they eventually come out and um, this one was a respray from rainbow railroads rainbow railways i think um, based up in fife i think um so which yeah i can't fault to be honest it's a really really good um respray and i love it um but i guess if you can get them from factory for a bit cheaper, then you can't complain really. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the actual general setup of the layout, not much has changed. I've still got a bit of snow out, as you can see. Um, that I've cleared most of the lines of it, to be honest. I, I sort of um and ah between whether I want to keep the snow or whether I don't, because I love the German market setup. That was. Uh, a little project I guess that still hasn't really been completed because I was going to have it really sort of populated and as you can see I haven't put the roofs on these two but in some of these ones here um, let's get this to focus you see I was waiting um, and putting like little figures and everything in there so I, the ones with the roofs on they all have figures inside um, the ones without I still need to put them in but I've got a, um, a huge amount of figures and stuff here 
um, I'll, sh I'll walk you through this in a little while um, so yeah we got the little navy set up there I don't know where the, the little sidecar has gone where's that I have these little um, I, I'm probably not the the best place to to put them but I had this this little setup down here um, with those little vehicles so maybe I took them off to hoover up or something but but yeah we've got the Scott Rail um, Scott Rail vans here the ones here I've got the network rail um, you know transit and then this was a, a network rail one as well which I I re-decaled to a first um, you see that on the the front and the back I hope that's focusing for you um, originally I did that to, to suit my Great Western stuff, obviously um, I've still got my purple Great Western, first Great Western HST um, and 153 and stuff like that so it, it sort of went with went with all that um, but obviously the Scottish stuff um, has has a lot of the first stuff in it. I think, I think even though they've rebranded to the Soul Tire livery they're still owned by the first group so that sort of fits either way We've got the Land Rover there and the old um, Series 1 as well, which both go on the rails. So those are just some quite cool stuff. But then obviously to suit the the Scottish stuff, I've got the, uh, the Saltire Scott Rail Transit. Um, just a few, few other sort of cars and stuff in there. Um, I don't know if any of you are sort of interested in finding out how I did all the the road section here and the pavement um, it took a huge amount of effort and time to get it all I laid all these I don't know how well you can see with the snow to be honest but all these um, these little paving blocks and the the curbing I all laid and cut myself so it took a long time but if that's something if anyone's interested in finding out how I did uh, I'm more than welcome to to share that with you so I've got a few more trees recently. Um, I ordered just you know boxes of them off eBay, just some some small little auctions just to to populate the the sort of park area, which um, you know in the end result is meant to be filled with people around the German market. But you know equally in the summer, if I took all the snow away, I've got the cricket pavilion that I can have you know sports games and stuff going on in there. Um, all of these street lights work. They're just not, um, they're not all wired. I've got a huge wiring job to do underneath. Um, yeah, other than that, I don't think there's much to cover. Um, the station building, I guess, that might change at some point. That's quite a very old kit. That was ooh, from maybe 2005. It's a, a Dunster um, station kit that Hornby used to make. Um, and that's that's been on the layout ever since I first first got it, which was a long time ago, a good sort of 10, 15 years ago. So that might change just because I'm not a huge fan of all the plastic platforms. I did, um, as you can probably just see there, I used the Metcalf uh, platform walls. I, well, you know the the whole kit that comes to make your your own platform sections. I just took the walling area and cut them to size and with the mallard in at the moment it's probably not the best way to actually see it but on all of the insides of all of the platform walls it's all um, red brick so it does make it I guess you can sort of see it down there as well um, it does make it look a bit better but um, I'd still prefer the tops to look a bit better than the, the plastic finish that they have but yeah a lot of this is Hornby buildings and the Scaledale stuff which they seem to have cut back on in recent years but a lot of it was probably familiar to you, um, the farm buildings and signal boxes and all the shops and a lot of the, the buildings on here other than that waiting room which again with the mallard and the platform you can't really see too well but that's the, um, the Backman Scenecraft Bluebell um, waiting room. So yeah, overall, you know, in terms of visuals, um, incredibly sort of st well, still pleased with it. Um, it's just the, I guess the actual running side of things that I'm having a lot of issues with, with the gauging of the platforms and all the DCC issues that I'm having. So not entirely sure what I'm gonna be doing yet if I remodel the whole thing or if I just start little other projects, you know, little layouts and stuff to to compensate for that. But but yeah, um, 
in terms of that that's all good and over here I don't know if anyone's interested this is sort of the area where I sort of do all my work really um, in terms of little bits and pieces I need to do for the layout so we've obviously got the the MPV down here um, GWR um, class 57 Tintagel Castle got a mark one sitting there so you know it's just well, that's what I use for the snow the woodland scenic stuff I tend to um, use that from now on on all the stuff that I've done I used the Hornby ballast and I think it was Java scenics um, Java scenics for all the grass and you know all this sort of foliage areas and stuff like that but after after starting um, using the woodland scenic stuff I'd sort of prefer that so I think from now on I'll start collecting those we've got the little <coughs> narrow gauge little coach there to commemorate the royal wedding which um i haven't got any narrow gauge stuff but i'm definitely going to look into it um but yeah that's just a small little memento but i wouldn't be surprised if i end up getting some narrow gauge stuff at some point this is part of the tpo um i guess long-term viewers will remember that i have all the the backman tpo coaches um so that was to sort of a setup that I had with those though I do I do still have them I just haven't had them out they're more of like a heritage side of things which I'm still trying to work out how to sort of include in the layout but in terms of figures I quite like all the knock stuff to be honest all the um, <coughs> all of the German markets and everything they're all knock kits at them so I've started to look at a lot of their stuff recently you can get it um, you know quite a few of the English websites and I'm pretty impressed by the finish of them to be honest and nothing wrong with Metcalf I've obviously made quite a few of their stuff I've got the little tables down there and the walls in the background but I'm quite a fan of the knock stuff so I might be be getting some more of them um, but yeah I think this is this is just the general sort of workbench um, but yeah it was just in case any of you find any of that interesting really so so yeah, I hope um, hope this sort of helps. I think I might do another video um, quite soon, just running through all the, the new Hornby releases, what I'm looking forward to and how I sort of gauge all of them, because I've just got the, the new Hornby catalogue in, so I can have a run through that. Um, I know people have done it already, but I guess you know you might be interested to hear what I'm I'm interested in seeing. So so yeah i hope hope you enjoyed this um if there's any additions you sort of recommend or anything you want to know more about i'm more than happy to to try and answer those but obviously i will be heading back up to university soon so i won't have access to this um for a little while but i'm going to try and adapt and and still put out content while i'm out there so hope you had a new year a good new year sorry and a good christmas and yeah i'll catch you in, in my next video thanks